Introduction Way back when this class was just an idea, it was very important to me that it was more than just a scrum theory class. There are three practices that have consistently helped others understand why Scrum is a worthwhile framework to use. First, explaining the Scrum rules clearly. Second, being as concise as possible in my explanation, but poking fun every now and again, of course. And thirdly, explaining how these Scrum rules can help to make projects a success. The last point, for me, is in some ways the most important reason why I became a Scrum Master and why I felt passionate enough to create this class. I feel that it is important for us to understand what makes each Scrum rule so powerful. That way, we can have confidence that Scrum is not just another marketing stunt, but an easy-to-understand framework for running successful projects. Whether you're a Scrum Master, product owner, team member, business stakeholder, or simply someone who wants to understand what makes Scrum tick, this class is for you. There are two parts to this class. Part 1, an overview and recap of the Scrum rules and practices. Part 2, a more detailed look at the power of Scrum with real-world tips and experiences from blue-chip companies. Every chapterized lesson includes, first, a concise, clear explanation giving you a firm foundation in Scrum. Secondly, nuggets of knowledge based on real industry experience. And thirdly, a brief insight into everyday situations that you won't find in every Scrum class. So, where does this experience come from? Has it been tried and tested? What evidence is there to back up the text? Well, let's kick off a little history of who I am. I write this text as a certified Scrum Master with experience in international blue chip companies dating back to 1999. That experience includes leading projects for the BBC, General Electric, Oracle, B Sky B, Razorfish, and Hit Entertainment responsible for Bob the Builder and other well-known cartoons. These roles have all involved leadership on a wealth of mobile, internet TV, and web software projects. I have played the role of Scrum Master and in earlier years of Team Lead and Technical Lead. I've had the privilege of running projects and rolling out working practices in market-leading organizations from start to finish. My career began before Agile and Scrum methods were widespread in the industry, and this gave me the benefit of leading and working on projects using non-Agile methodologies such as Prince 2 and Waterfall. For this reason, I've seen both sides of this story and can give good reasons why I ended up on the Scrum side of it. Having used both Agile and non-Agile variants, I can honestly say that the Scrum framework when fully understood and used as its creators intended, has been the most successful framework for delivering a quality product. At the same time, it gives ambitious businesses the flexibility to change requirements as needed in this modern world. Based on this experience, rest assured that I appreciate deadlines, requirements challenges, technical complexities, and learning challenges that projects throw up with or without Scrum Framework. I also see how this can apply to people at all levels, from the developer to the executive to the average person who has heard about Scrum before and wants to know how it can help them to organize projects. The principles of Scrum are simple to understand, but the real challenge comes when helping others to understand and trust such a simple framework to deliver quality products, maximize return on investment, and still be fun at the same time. Yes, really. So, how can a framework be so simple yet so powerful? How can it save failing projects and carve structure out of chaotic projects, even in complex blue chip companies? Well, let's get straight into the next chapter and all will become clear. Then you can start to put this knowledge to practice. Enjoy. The birth of Agile. The term Agile is one that is often used and misused in the software development industry. Given that Agile is so closely related to Scrum, let us nail down exactly what Agile means and how it is relevant in context of Scrum. 
By the end of the 1990s, there was a broad consensus of thought leaders who recognized the shortfalls of waterfall, no pun intended, software development. Many of them founded their own new iterative methods of software development. Iterative development is fundamentally different from waterfall. As opposed to upfront phases with lots of upfront requirements gathering, iterative methods contain many phases of requirements, design, implementation, testing and delivery within a number of weeks. This allows the business to release a few features early and make some return on investment. They also get to discover potential issues early and change requirements far more often. Working in iterations also allows the project to react to people pinching through periodic replanning. Many of these iterative methods were also lightweight since their founders believed in performing the simplest task possible to solve any given problem.